You know, one of the first things all the Lanian boys learn to do is emulate their elders and those that came before us. And our little Narragansett, Niantic little boys and girls loved the water. They would see their parents go out oystering, scalloping, crabbing, and getting fish, and they would want to do the same. So they had a favorite fishing spot. We call it Deep Pond today. They would all go there, and they would have their string and their hook, and they'd have it. One or two would make a pole, and they would go fishing. And it was very hard to get the fish because they're in this deep pond no one has ever, ever found the bottom. But they knew they were fish there because their moms and dads and uncles and aunts and cousins had all caught a lot of fish. And all the little boys and girls that played together would go out there fishing. And one by one, they'd pull in a fish. They might have pumpkin seeds. They might have little perch. <sighs> they might have sunfish. And they would get just enough for their families and bring them home. And their mothers would fry up the fish and they might have some Johnny cakes or potatoes on the side. And oh, it was a feast to have that. Well, one summer, or actually it was early spring, the boys and girls were out there fishing. And one boy caught one fish after another, and he wouldn't tell what his bait was. He caught so much fish, the other boys said, I can catch as many as you. I'm going to find out what you're doing, what you're using. And he dove into the water, and he found the bait, the type of bait this boy was using. And it was a cricket. And he said, aha! Well, after that, they would start competing, fishing one after another. They had so many fish when they brought them home. It took a long time to clean. And sometimes they'd give them to a neighbor or a friend and say, here, you can have them. But they didn't want to have to clean all those fish. There were so many. But these little boys were so greedy, they kept fishing and getting more and more fish. And the dads and moms said, don't catch any more fish than you can clean, because the rule is, whatever you catch, you have to clean, and then we eat it. But these two boys were determined to get as many fish as they can. They'd fill their baskets with as many fish as they could. And sometimes they'd get tired of cleaning fish, and they'd throw the others away. They didn't even give them to somebody else. They didn't share them. But all the while this was going on, down deep, deep in the bottom of the pond, the little grandmother turtle. And she was the one that would release the fish. And she always knew that the children and the adults would only take what was necessary. But more and more fish were going. Were more people living around this pond? And she came up to the surface and she floated and swam all around the pond. Her eyes were looking to see what was going on. And then she saw these two little boys with these huge baskets filled with fish. And she said, this is not good. This is not good at all. If they take all the fish now, there'll be none for the next. Go back down, down, down underneath the water. I must think about this. Well, a few weeks later, she came back up. And the boys, the two boys, had their baskets filled with fish. And they had decided they were going to go for a quick swim before they came home. They dove into the water, and as they were swimming around and laughing and talking about how many perch they had and, 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 and how many flatfish they had and how many perch they had and pumpkin seeds and sunfish, all of a sudden, 
I can grab toes in and, and pull them down, 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 down. Deep underneath the water, the boys could hardly hold their breath. Grandmother Turtle took them and brought them into her cave. And she sat them down and she told them, you were taught never to take more than what you needed. And yet, you were taking all of these fish you were even throwing them away. There won't be any for other people if you keep doing that. So now, you're going to live down here with me. And you're going to help me release the fish for the people. And the two little boys, they knew they'd miss their families, their moms, their dads, their brothers and their sisters. But they knew they had done wrong. So even today, they live down near with Grandmother Trail. They never got older. They never grew up. But they still release the fish so that all the boys and girls that live around the pond can go out and get their fair share. Or maybe two or three extras that they can clean and give to Grandma or somebody else. So always remember, Never take cake more than what you need. Support this and other great podcast content at our Patreon page, www.patreon.com forward slash artways. Tomaquag Arts programs are sponsored by Amica Insurance. Auto, home, life, Amica. The Indigenous Artways podcast is funded in part by the Rhode Island State Council of the Arts, investment in arts and culture. Music presented by Eagle and Hawk, www.eagleandhawk.com. <laughs>